Quantum dots are a type of photoluminescent nanoparticle that exist at the cutting edge of material science. They have a wide range of applications, from quantum encryption that's far more advanced than blockchain, all the way to quantum LEDs in your TV. While these are typically made in the most advanced laboratories, you can also make them at home. For this synthesis, I muddled together 1.5 grams of citric acid and 0.5 grams of urea and cooked it in a 700 watt microwave for 5 minutes. The microwave radiation polymerized them together into amide-stabilized graphene nanoparticles. I next used ultrasonic vibrations to break up the microparticles and suspend my nanoparticles in solution. This is done by loading my sample into an ultrasonic cleaner and sonicating for 10 minutes. This will agitate the mixture at a frequency of 20 kHz and break up the microscopic clumps. This is run for about 10 minutes and then the unit is turned off and the particles are removed for filtration. The filtering step is necessary to remove any particles that might have been formed outside of the nanoscopic range. To do this, I first draw the mixture up into a clean 10 milliliter syringe. I then connect a 0.22 micron filter to the end of the syringe and push the liquid back through it. This will filter out any particles that formed larger than 220 nanometers and leave me with a quantum dot suspension. These are stored in a 20 milliliter clean vial and due to the amide stabilization provided by the urea, these should last a long time. I will note that this method of filtration is not ideal, as my quantum nanoparticles are about 2 to 3 nanometers in size, which is far smaller than the pores in the filter. This means that my final product is nowhere near pure, but considering this was more of a proof of concept than anything else, it was fine for my purposes and very cheap. In any case, that's the entire synthesis and filtration process, so now I'm going to test the emission spectra of my graphene nanoparticles using UV light. Nanoparticles of this size are referred to as quantum dots because their behavior is unlike normal matter and subject to quantum confinement. To understand this, you need to know that electrons behave as waves at the quantum scale and are excited by photons of specific wavelength. Typically, these excitation wavelengths are in the visible spectrum due to pi conjugation and other macroscopic influences. However, as these particles approach the size of the de Broglie wavelength of the electron wave function, the excitation wavelength becomes blue shifted. Eventually it's blue shifted all the way down into the UV range, and these quantum dots will emit visible light when exposed to UV light, which we call photoluminescence. The emission spectra is determined by the size of the quantum particle, and is red shifted as the quantum particle increases in size. The quantum dots I made primarily emit blue light, which indicates a size of around 2 to 3 nanometers. This is obviously an enormous oversimplification of what's going on, and if you'd like a full video on quantum mechanics, leave a comment. In any case, for the rest of the video, I just drop my quantum dots into different solvents to see how they affect the photoluminescence. At first I just did water, then I did isopropyl, then acetone, and then methanol. Methanol was last, and I think it looked the coolest, but acetone was interesting because it drew attention to the fact that yellow emitting and green emitting nanoparticles were also formed, um, which I'm going to look at more in the future. In any case, I'm definitely going to make this into a series because I think there's a lot of interesting work I can do with this, but I hope you found at least this interesting, and if you'd like to see more like this, consider giving me a follow. I also included a couple formulas at the end to show how quantum nanoparticle size is calculated from the emission spectra. I'll go more in depth on them later, but for now it might be interesting to at least give a look. In any case, that's it, and as always, consider supporting this content by giving me a follow here or on my YouTube.